Hey kids, welcome to Unit 4, Lesson 2, Object Aliases Inequality, Exercise Number 2. We have another Investigate and Modify, run the program to observe the results, then experiment with the program by making the following modifications. Change one line at a time, then run the program after each change to observe the results. Looks like we have three things to do. Let's take a look at the code first. It looks like we're creating two strings prom, first title, second title. Then we're instantiating a new object of the string class containing the word prom. We're instantiating three objects from the event class. First event is a new event. It has prom and 500 as its parameters. Second event is equal to the first event. So we're setting the second event equal to the first. And then third event is a new event prom. This one has 800 people. We have our Boolean result. Does first title equal equal second title? Then we're printing the results. Let's look at event. We have two private instance variables, event name, capacity. Our constructor takes two parameters, event name and capacity. That's prom and 500 and 800. We have a get event name, get capacity. And then we have this equals method. And it is passing along one parameter, other event. And if event name equal equals the other event name, and we're getting the event name, it's true. And then we're returning the status. This looks like this is comparing two names of an event. Our first object and the object we're passing along. And if what's ever in that object's name are the same, it's gonna return true. Let's go back to my console. When I hit run, what do I think is gonna happen? Well, first title and second title are strings and strings are referencing, and they're both against the word prom, so they're gonna reference the same thing. So we should get results true to print off down here. They are, they're the same thing, so I'm getting true. Why are these two equal? When computer science, string interning is a method of storing only one copy of each distinct string value, which must be immutable. Interning strings makes the string process task more time and space efficient. What this really means, kids, is string literals that have the same words are going to be equal to each other. Objects are not going to be. So two strings can have the same word and they can be equal, but two strings and an object with the same word are going to be different because the string literals are all pointing to one word to be efficient where the objects are separate. Let's look at number one. In my console Java, change a line 12 to first event equal equal third event. We'll then run the program to observe the results. Why do you think this happens? Let's just copy and paste this part right here. We're going to go down here and paste first event equal equal third event. Well, I know first event and third event are two separate objects here. Because of that, I think we're going to get false to print off down here. Well, let's see if I'm right. We do, we do get false. On line 12, we're going to change it to first event equals that method we saw, third event. We'll then run the program to observe the results. Well, why do you think that happened? Well, let's copy and paste this over. So we have first event equals third event. Third event is being passed along. First event is the name that we're equaling. Because we're under the first event, we have the event name already, and we're comparing it to the parameter other event. And if what's contained in there is the same, we should get true, otherwise it's gonna stay false. For this one, we're comparing names, not the capacity. Remember, it says get event name, not the capacity. Because of that, we're comparing prom with prom. 
and we're not comparing objects. Because of that, I think when I hit run, I'm going to get true. Looks like I'm right, kids. So this equals is comparing what's inside our instantiated object. Equal equals is comparing if objects are the same thing. Good to know. We're going to go and invent Java, look at the equals method. What do you notice about the condition? Try changing the condition to compare capacity with other event capacity. We'll then run the program to observe the results. Why do you think this happened? Let's go over to events. And as I talked about, these are comparing names. From whatever instantiated object we're calling the method, that's going to be our event name. And then we're passing the parameter of the other object. Right now, the names are both prompts, so we're getting true. If we change this to capacity, one's 500, one's 800, I think we're going to get false. How would we do that? Well, we're not checking event name, we're checking capacity. And we don't want to get the event name, we want to get capacity. Now, when I hit run, we have 500 equal equal 800. That is not true, so we should get false. Well, let's see if I'm right, kids. And it looks like I am. The equals method, as we're going to learn, is already a method that exists within Java. What we're doing is overriding it to get a result that we want, much like we did with toString. Key takeaway from this lesson, kids, is again reinforcing that for objects we use equal equal to compare if they're the same object or referencing the same memory. For primitive types, we're just doing a value comparison. And this equals method is actually overriding a method that already exists in Java. Much like the two string, we want to return something that is useful to us. So we can keep that same method signature, change what's inside. And this is a very powerful tool we have in computer science. And it is also something you're probably going to see on the FRQ exam. As we've talked about before, there's only a couple things you can do. One of the more popular ones is comparing two values. So you have to understand how the equals method works and how to override it and call to get a result that you want. Hopefully, kids, this video helped you understand object aliases and equality a little bit better. As always, if you have any more questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.